Boxing on the Zone, sponsored by William Hill. Here in Manatee, Puerto Rico, this crowd chomping at the bit for their returning hero, Subre Amatias, 32 years old, five foot eight inches tall, the exact same height as Liam Parra, who's unbeaten, 24-0 with 15 knockouts, but it's Subre Amatias who is a seven to one favorite here tonight. But maybe you're seeing shades of another Aussie. Remember when George Camposis came into the backyard of Tiafimo Lopez in New York City and stunned him. Can Paro do the same thing for Australia here tonight? Let's go into the ring. Okay guys, I give you instruction in the dressing room. Only having a team match. Good luck, God bless you. Le di la instrucciones en el camerino. Vamos a una pelea limpia que gane Moro. Dios bendiga. A thunderous ovation for Subriel Matias, and they expect a thunderous performance. He's made five fighters in a row quit on their stool, and he promises to do the same to Australia's Liam Paro, who comes in undefeated and with the look of a man ready to spoil a Puerto Rican party. Here we go for the super lightweight championship of the world. Notice how Paul's not really loading up on shots. He's just hitting the gloves. You know, he, he's not looking to get respect right now, but if he can get this round, even if it was given to him by Matias, he'll take it. Because he's, he's the only one doing the punching and being active. You know, Tate Davis also traditionally starts very slow. Another man in action tonight. The man behind us, the great Felix Trinidad, would sometimes start off slow as well. You know, some fighters just like to fill out the, the power and the speed before they start Go unleashing ahead. their own power. I think Matias has thrown one punch, maybe. Well, death. Taxes and, and Subriel Matias losing the first round. And Paro is ready for the storm to hit. It's like a hurricane you can see on the radar, Sergio, but you just don't know when it's gonna, the eye's gonna cross your hometown. Yeah, but right now, you know, pa Paro hasn't really felt the power of Matias. Matias hasn't unleashed that power yet, and I think he's, he's, he's not really expecting power okay, right now. So he just wants to pepper, pepper Matias with some shots and some points, and and hope that he can, he can just win these early rounds. I don't know if Matias is trying to surprise him and ambush him with power, but right now he's giving Liam Paul a lot of confidence and a lot of punches are being thrown. Well, Subriel told us he wants to take his time, wants to make Aro suffer. Meanwhile, Paro will keep taking singles and doubles oh, 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 to use a baseball analogy. Okay, stop, stop. Hey, hey. You know, when studying for fights, I like to compare them with other great fights in the past. And I look at Subre and Matias, and it reminds me of a Puerto Rican Kelly Pavlik. There's a flurry for Matias, who's starting to open up now. Good body work there from Subriel Matias. Finally letting them hands go with some power right there. But to go back to what I was saying, Todd, you remind me a little bit of okay, a tall, stop. lanky puncher stop. in Kelly Pavlik. Hey, and hey. if that's the case, Paulo needs to fight like Sergio Martinez, a southpaw, not stand in front of him. He's a much smaller fighter. He needs to pick and peck, use the angles, and always use the ring. Paulo's doing just that and having success. Good uppercut there from Paulo. Okay, stop, stop. Optimism in the corner for Subrio Matias. He's grinding away to the body as Paro tries to create some space. Okay, stop, stop. 
Chris, I mean, excuse me, Sergio, were you surprised at the uh, mood there in the corner of Matias? Listen, I, I have great respect for Jacob Panda Nahari. I think he's an excellent trainer. But yeah, I think he's a little bit too comfortable right now. And I don't think he's seen what we're seeing. You know, I don't think there's cause for concern just yet because they got that power and they know that they can unleash that monster, but I don't think it's as, as close as he, as he sees it. Yeah, but what happened to the 80 and 90 punches around, Chris? That's what we were expecting to see. Look, I can give Liam Paul credit for that. Like, he is fighting a very good tactical fight. He's not overloading on his punches. He's not looking for a knockout. He's just looking to, to rack up scoring points, and I think he's done that really well. I disagree with Panda's assessment. I don't think it's an even fight right now. I think at this point, Paro's up. But I think it is also clear that Matias' punches carry a lot more weight when he lands. Well, I think that's most definitely true. And you have to remember, Matias has never won a decision. Nice flurry there from Matias as this crowd starts to come unglued. And this is what I want to see. How was Liam Paul going to be affected by the pressure and the power once he got clipped? We just saw that he fought right back. saw Matias punching with his free hand there. Sergio, are you agreeing with that? Has Paro found that second wind as Matias steps forward? I, I don't think I don't think he, he's actually lost his first okay, so, win. So. He's been boxing on one gear, Liam Paro. He hasn't needed more than two or three. You know, that one has been enough. He's been in this fight. He's got the respect. He's peppering. He's getting the angles. He's using the ring. Liam Paro's boxing nicely. It's okay, Matias so. that's not making the adjustments, in my, in my opinion, keeping this fight way too close. Hey, stop, stop. You know, exposed is a strong hey, word, stop. and I'm not going to use it right here, but I'm just going to tell you, I'm really impressed with Liam Paro, and I'm a little disappointed in what I'm seeing in Subriel Matias, the monster that we expected. That's Chris George just back here at ringside. Chris, do you think maybe Matias thought this was okay, going to be an er easier fight than it is. Look, outside of the man that beat him, nobody has been able to go the distance with Subriel Matias. And every one of his last five opponents has retired on their stool. So we talked this week about how loose Subriel Matias was, how confident he was. There's certainly a possibility as we watch this fight play out, maybe he was overconfident about how he'd fight against Liam Paro. Did Matias catch Paro there? The crowd seems to think so. But then Paro answers back with a nice couple okay, jabs. So the, the legs are strong. The jab was popping. Oh, hey, Paul's just fine. The conditioning's there. I don't see how Matias won this fight. I mean, I could see a, a draw. But you got to give all the credit to Liam Paul right here. And I hate, I hate that that okay, point so deduction might be crucial in this decision. Where's the last stand for Matias? Where's the guns blazing? Where's the do or die that he just said we'd see? Not once have we seen Liam Paul shook or intimidated by the power of Matias. Imagine how exhausted both of these fighters are, especially Paro, who's thrown so many more punches okay, tonight. Stop, stop. They'll have to fix the glove with a half minute to go. And it could be the most important 30 seconds of Matias' career. The championship rounds have belonged to the Australian with 22 to go. And the prodigy still punching, still pushing him back, still trying to win this round. Good right hand from Paro. And now Subriel digging deep. And that will do it as Liam Paro just pulled off one of the upsets of the year in Puerto Rico. Will go to the scorecards. Unbelievable performance by Liam Paro, the prodigy. Disappointing performance by Matias. Never unleashed the beast. This is a close fight. I got to tell you, man. This was a perfect performance by Liam Paro. I think he deserves this decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here in Manati, Puerto Rico, we go to the judges' scorecards, and they read as follows.
Carl Zappia and Jerry Martinez, 115-112. John Basili, 116-111. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. And the new He's